guys, Julie here with Northern Waters Cleansing Co. And thanks so much for watching today. Uh, in front of you here, you're gonna see a bunch of bath bombs that uh, I need to do a little more work on today. Um, these ones are made with the bath bomb press and with the whoopie pie mold. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is uh, put some bubble frosting on the inside here and stick two of them together and then it's going to look like a lovely little sweet treat and then over here I have some uh, pretzels that I made with um, it's actually just a mold I got from the dollar store uh, it's a non-stick um, like baking tray and I will find it here yeah so this is what it looks like um, I think this cost me maybe four dollars, three or four dollars, um, Canadian. So that's not really bad at all. And, uh, so what I did was I just pressed my bath bomb mixture into these, um, flipped it over, and then I just kind of had to hammer the back a little, um, with like a, a stainless steel spoon I have. So, and they came out fine. That's, uh, you know, what they look like. So I'd like to put some... Uh, sort of bubbling drizzle on them and uh, so that's what I'm going to do tonight uh, this wasn't really a video that I had planned to film but I thought hey maybe you'd like to see uh, how I put these things together okay so what I'm making here is what's typically called a two ingredient uh, bath bomb frosting and if you're in any sort of Facebook bath bomb groups, you're gonna find that a lot of people give away this recipe for free. So I have no problem sharing it here uh, with you today as well. And uh, so essentially, uh, it's supposed to be two ingredients. I actually add a third, but uh, just to help harden it up. But it is uh, baking soda, uh, cocomito propyl betaine, and I add in some cream of tartar as well, just to um, it makes it harden up a little bit quicker. I'm not as exact with this recipe as I am with uh, my actual bath bombs. Um, so with this one, I go by like a measuring cup. So it takes about one cup of baking soda. Whereas when I'm making bath bombs or soap or anything else, I tend to go by weight. But uh, for this particular one, you know, humidity can definitely play a role in how this icing uh, turns out. And so that's why I don't go too strict on my measurements for this. So anyways, first up is baking soda. And I'm gonna do a cup of that. And so there we go. One cup of baking soda. Next up is cocomidal propyl betaine. And uh, I'll just show you the label here. So this particular one came from uh, Voyager Soap and Candle Co. Uh, usually I order um, pretty well all of my soap supplies from Candora, but uh, in this case, uh, Candora was sold out. So went with the next best uh, supplier here. And so this is what I'm using as the wet portion. I have a quarter cup scoop here. I'm going to fill that up, but I'm not necessarily going to use this entire amount. So what I'm actually going to do first is just put this off to the side for a moment because I want to get the cream of tartar. Okay, I've got my cream of tartar here and my favorite dollar store uh, tablespoon measure. So I'm going to throw in, I think I'll put in two because I actually need these to harden up um, a little bit quicker. I would like them to be ready for tomorrow, but that's uh, slightly ambitious. So if these, if they could be ready within two days, I would be pleased with that. And we'll just give that a little mix before I add in the cocomidal propyl uh, betaine. And just kind of getting out all these little chunky chunks. Okay, so in we go. I'm gonna do about half to start and see how that mixes up. What you're looking for here is a sort of like um, buttercream icing kind of consistency. So I just kind of mash it down like this. Helps me kind of suss out the consistency 
This isn't quite piping consistency yet. We're gonna lose that. I'm gonna add the slightest touch more. But if you can see in my measuring cup here, there's actually still quite a bit left in there. So again, I'm just gonna work this in because we are pretty well there at the consistency that I would like to use for piping. So yeah, you can see that this has a really like a, a buttercream icing sort of consistency, and that's what I'm going for. So that looks good to me. I'm gonna grab my piping bag and piping tip and I'll bring it back. Okay, so I'm back with my piping bag and uh, I'm using a star tip. This is a great tip that I got. It's a Wilton tip and it is plastic. Um, so it's not gonna last forever in terms of piping my cold process soap. But uh, I got this at the dollar store. They just happen to have this one and then an open round tip. Uh, and it was a buck. So I'm gonna load up the piping bag here with the frosting. One thing you'll definitely notice, so if you're making this frosting and uh, you use too much of the cocomidal propyl betaine, um, your mix will actually start kind of puffing up. And uh, so that's why it's important to, you know, just go slow, mix it slowly at first. My mix here is actually puffing up a little too and um, I didn't even use the full quarter cup. It's been really rainy here this week. We're still sort of waiting for summer up here in the north. <laughs> or I shouldn't even say summer. We're still kind of waiting for spring. Like it's still under um, 10 degrees Celsius most days. I think today was eight, something like that. And you know, today is what, May 16th? So. You know, that, that's still a little bit chilly for here. But it is what it is. Soon enough, summer will be here and everyone will be out on the lake and at their cottages. So that will be nice. Okay, piping is already here. So we're going to put these guys over. So these will be the bottoms, these will be the tops. Do the same thing here. Now one thing I will show you that you may find interesting. Here, this is a prime example of a batch of bath bomb mix that I didn't bloom the baking soda. And to be honest with you, I've been trying to keep up with production. Um, there's just been a massive demand uh, for my bath bomb products lately and um, so I actually haven't had the time to bloom the baking soda first. Now ultimately it's just a cosmetic thing but if I get this really nice and close and hopefully the camera focuses, do you see these little white dots? Those would actually disappear if I bloomed the baking soda first. But in this case, I didn't have time to do that. So I just, um, I'm using water soluble dye in this one. And uh, I, you know, mixed it with water, but then I just mixed it into the bath bomb mix as I was going. And um, yeah, you end up getting these little white dots. Again, totally cosmetic. And um, what I'm probably gonna do before I package these up for sale is use a little spritzer bottle I have. Um, put a little bit more of this. This is the Robin's egg dye from um, Fizz Fairy, another Northern girl. So gotta support the Northern girls. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably put some of that dye into just like a sprayer, a bottle sprayer, and I'll just spray the outsides and it'll kind of cover up those white dots. So totally not concerned about it. Again, just a cosmetic thing, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, this. The mixture's definitely a little wetter than I had hoped, but um, so you can see in these, this bath bomb, it's got like that little indent. So I start with the, the one dollop there and then I just go around and I'll show you. So these guys will ultimately 
go on top. And I'm just going to squish it down a little bit. Nothing too crazy because I, I want people to see the icing in the middle there. So we'll go around on the rest of these. And I've actually got a second tray to do as well. So the inclusion of the cream of tartar in this recipe um, is simply to have the icing just harden up a little faster. Now I have found if you decide to put icing on your bath bombs and you package the bath bombs prematurely, meaning before the icing has really dried out and had a good, good amount of time to set up, um, you're going to find that your bath bombs are actually soggy by the time you unpack them, um, simply because of the, the moisture content in the cocomidal propyl betaine. Whoop. Can you just stick together there? Okay, so I'm just going to hold it because it's not totally, totally set yet. Let's see. Like, not at all, dude. Let's just put a little bit more on here. Okay. Let's throw that back on. And I'm holding it right now because it's not set, but ultimately that's just kind of how it's going to look. And since I have a little bit of extra icing here, I think I'll just, I'll just throw a little bit more in a couple of these. Super cool. I've got another little tray here to do. I actually think I'm going to Pull them over to this tray. And there we go. So we're going to let these guys harden up for a couple of days. Um, then I will spray the tops. Like I said, with I'll put a little bit of color in a spray bottle and it will just cover up these these white dots will cover up a little bit of my laziness by, by not blooming the um, <laughs> the baking soda. Hey, it's the, it's the way it goes sometimes. Okay, so here we are back again, and it's time for the next project, which is to make sort of like a, a dipped look on these pretzel bath bombs. So again, just like I showed you with the whoopie pie ones, Hopefully my camera is focusing here, but you can see these little white dots. Again, that's from not blooming my baking soda. If I bloom the baking soda first, um, I don't get these little white dots, but that is just a cosmetic thing. So I'm really not concerned. And especially with these ones, because I'm intending to cover a good portion of them with the dip mixture I'm making right here. So I have no qualms about giving you the recipe for uh, this mixture because again if you're in any sort of um, Facebook bath bomb group you'll see that this mixture is uh, or this recipe is given away for free all the time and uh, so I'm going to do a slight little tweak to it today but um, otherwise this is this is just a free recipe sort of floating out there no doubt it's on Pinterest as well too so um, nothing too proprietary happening here but Let's go ahead. So in here I have melted cocoa butter. Um, I get this from Amazon. It comes in like these little pastille kind of things, but I've got my baking soda here and I'm just doing it by the tablespoonful because I actually like to add a little bit of citric acid into this as well. So what am I at? Three, four, and I'm just gonna give this a mix up. This is another recipe where you're really sort of going by texture and you're not so much um, going by exact weights. So again, this needs a considerable amount more of baking soda. So what, I was at four, here's five. Okay, so that's eight baking soda, eight tablespoons, my favorite little tablespoon from the dollar store. Here I have my citric acid, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Let's go with that and see where this gets us. 
Okay, so it's not totally where I want it yet, but at this point, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of titanium dioxide, oil soluble titanium dioxide. This is titanium dioxide for oil. Usually I use titanium dioxide that's uh, water soluble and that's what I use in my soap and stuff, but I got this tiny little bag for um, the odd time that I actually need it for um, oil based things. Okay, so I think at this point I'm gonna try and go with this. So, move in my pretzels here so you can see. I'm actually just gonna stagger them a little bit. And I think that's what I'm gonna do, just sort of like a half, half of the pretzel like that, because then what I want to do is do like a pink sort of drizzle over top. So again, oops, I'm doing it on the opposite side, oh well. Now my bath bombs here have uh, polysorbate 80 in them, even though I used a water soluble dye in the bath bombs, polysorbate is part of my regular recipe. So it will help to emulsify the cocoa butter that's in this drizzle mixture. Help emulsify it in with the water when it's time for bath time. When you uh, put the citric acid in this drizzle mixture, you do get a much um, coarser mixture. So you could put your citric acid through like a coffee grinder, um, at least if your citric acid is coarse like mine is, um, you could put it through a coffee grinder and uh, that will give you a much smoother mixture. glitter on. Okay yes we should totally throw some glitter on because I have Sweet Tooth Bio Glitter from the Fizz Fairy. So I think it definitely needs a little bit of that. So this isn't a, a super chunky glitter. I don't know how well the camera will actually pick that up but I think it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah that's totally fun. I love that. Okay that was worth it. Good decision. So there they are, some beautiful dipped pretzel bath bombs. Now the question, what did I scent these in? Hmm, it is a fragrance from the Fizz Fairy and I'm just gonna go check my fragrance closet to see what it is. It is French Lime Blossom. Which is kind of funny because I used something called French Lime Blossom and I made a pink bath bomb with it, but you know what? I think it's sometimes hard for people to place uh, fragrances, so I don't think it's going to be a massive issue. So let's see, these guys will harden up. The uh, drizzle on top there will harden up overnight. The actual bath bombs have been drying uh, for probably about five days now, just because I couldn't get back to them. Um, usually I work on any sort of detailed work like this about 24 hours after making the bath bombs, but it's just been a crazy week. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so there they are. So I'm gonna put these off to firm up and cure a little bit more and then they're done. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, perhaps leave me a comment or a question down below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.